And good afternoon. I'm glad you're here with me today. We're going to be talking about the longest nerve in your body called the vagus nerve. Now, the vagus nerve connects your brain all the way through your body, all the way through the colon and everything in between. And so it is called the wanderer. And so if that kind of spurs a musical um, note to you, then, then that's a good thing. It is your cranial nerve, your 10th cranial nerve, or they could call it cranial nerve X, depending. So this is at the base of your, um, uh, of your brain, can't think right now, base of your brain all the way to your colon. You've got 12 or 13 pairs of cranial nerves, depending on who you're listening to, who you're studying. And these cranial nerves, they just do a lot for you. So the vagus nerve, you know, we say, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas and we don't want to tell anybody. Well, you know, that's what happens when you're in Las Vegas, but your vagus nerve tells your body everything. And so why did I title this? Why when your doctor tells you it's all in your head, that may be a good thing because your vagus nerve is connecting your gut to your brain. And if it's not connected properly, if it's not sending the right messages, then guess what? It is all in your head. You've got to innervate the vagus nerve. And I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to tell you how to do that. All right. So this is a article that was written by a naturopath. Her name is Dr. Ashley Turner. And uh, she is traditionally trained and board certified. Uh, it doesn't tell me where she is, but she wrote a couple of books. One is called The Restorative Kitchen. And the other one is called... Uh, restorative traditions. So it's all about uh, getting out of inflammatory uh, processes. And we know that when you have inflammatory processes and you're going to have a lot of problems. So the vagus nerve is the main component of the parasympathetic nervous, parasympathetic nervous system. So what does that mean? So you've got your central nervous system. You've got your uh, sympathetic with when you are in a fight or flight response, somebody's coming at you, I'm being chased by bees, somebody's holding a gun at my head or whatever, my adrenaline's going to pump, I'm going to be ready to fight or flight. That's your sympathetic nervous system. Your parasympathetic nervous system is to rest, recover, digest, and repair. So your vagus nerve is in control of your parasympathetic nervous system. Now, most of us live in sympathetic mode, okay? This is not good. Why do we live in sympathetic mode? We live in sympathetic mode because of all the stress that we're around. We live in sympathetic mode because we think somebody's trying to kill us all the time. You know, gas prices are high. We've got food shortages. We've got supply chain issues. I mean, we can't get things here in the clinic because guess what? Supply chain issues. So all of those things cause stress, which cause us to have a fight or flight response. When that never goes away, when you're always hearing on the radio, you're always hearing on the television, you know, you're going to die. Uh, you got to take these precautions, stay home, stay safe, all these kind of things. When you have this all the time, you get in a negative feedback loop in your sympathetic nervous system. And so your parasympathetic just shuts down. Now, here in the clinic, we work with you and sometimes we do what is called a heart rate variability test. Why do we do that? Because a heart rate var variability test tells us what's going on with your parasympathetic nervous system. Now, parasympathetic, all right, uh, somebody said they can't hear me. Let me see if I can turn up my volume a little bit. Let me see. Is that helpful? Is that helpful? Okay, let me know if that's helpful. My volume was down very low, so I apologize for that. Um, when you are using the heart rate variability monitor, what that does is it tests and uh, records your uh, variable intervals between your R rate of your heart. So, you know, you have your EKG and you've got this line going up and down. You've got an M spike. You've got a R spike, you've got a P spike, you've got all these different things. So a heart rate variability will tell you the difference of time between your R to R spike. If your R to R spike is, say, three seconds altogether, every three seconds it goes, that is not a good thing. 
because that means you do not have any variability. What we want to see when we do that heart rate variability, we want your way, we want a wave formation. Okay. What I sometimes see, a lot of times, I see a picket formation. Okay. Just up and down, up and down, up and down, not this wave formation. Okay. So when we're doing that, when the heart is doing that, you're stuck in sympathetic dominance. When you're stuck in sympathetic dominance, you have very low vagal nerve tone. When you have vagal nerve tone uh, that is very depressed, and you're going to have a lot of symptoms. So these are some of the symptoms that you could have. You could have hoarseness, hoarseness in your voice. This is not somebody that normally has a very low register of a voice. This is someone who normally is speaking at this level but then their register drops down and they get hoarse. Normally it's allergies or it's a, a bug of some kind. If you're suffering from a hoarse voice, hoarse voice, that is indicative of poor vagal nerve. If you have difficulty swallowing, that is indicative of poor vagal nerve. If you have a deficient gag reflex. Now, I'm not quite sure what that means. I did some research on that. You have a gag reflex, uh, your pharynx closes up your throat when there is a threat. So it stops, you know, if you've got a large object going down the throat, like a large coin or, or something like that, it'll, it'll close it off to protect you. Some people have trigger points. There's just all kinds of things that can happen. Your gag reflex protects you. So I would think a deficient gag reflex is either overactive or underactive. So if you've got that, then you've got some issues with that deviation of the uvula away from the side of the damaged nerve. So the uvula, that little thing in the back of your throat that hangs down like a punching bag, you've seen it on the cartoons, right? You've seen that. That is your uvula. It should be in the center of your mouth. If it's off to the side or pointing to the side, then you've got something going on with your uh, vagus nerve. Now the vagus nerve starts at the back of your neck and it comes around, you know, all of your cranial nerves comes around and then goes down the body. All right. And so when you are dealing, like say you're dealing with uh, Bell's palsy, you're dealing with cranial nerve issues, not your vagus nerve. You've got 12 to 13 pair of these nerves, right? And so when these nerves are doing what they need to do, and you've got good tone, then you're not going to have these symptoms. So when your uvula is going to one side or the other, that's the side that there's damage of the vagus nerve. So I'm just going to imagine all of you are going over to the mirror and you're opening your mouth really wide and you're looking at your uvula to see where it is. So it would be interesting to know kind of what's going on with that. Uh, abnormality in the heart rate variability, we talked about that. Gastrointestinal systems. Now, we do a whole lot of um, work here with the gut brain connection. Anytime you've got gut brain connection that is an issue, you're going to have vagal nerve issues. So we see gut brain connection almost 100% of the time. Why is that? Because we're all eating food that is not food and we do not have the nutrients. Another of the um, symptoms is nutritional deficits. Now remember, we have this little gizmo here, okay? This is our PS3 scanner, Pharmanex. There's the name of it right there. We brought this into the clinic about a year ago. Why is that? Because we have a lot of people that do not have good nutrition. So I'm going to show you this. This is what it looks like on the iPad, right? Trying to get the glare off. If you are very, very poor nutritionally, you're going to be over here in the red. If you're very, very good, you're going to be over here in the purple. And that's what we want to see. And so that's what we're looking at. And sometimes you're not absorbing your food because you have poor vagus nerve uh, tone. And so we want to get that resolved. If you have poor vagus nerve tone, you can have something called gastroparesis. What is gastroparesis? Gastroparesis means that your stomach does not contract your... All of your systems do not work so that your stomach stays full a long, long time. It just doesn't move the way it needs to to move the food into the small intestine and then into the large intestine and then out of the body. 
So that sometimes happens when we're older. That sometimes happens when we've got vagal nerve damage. And so we want to make sure that we look at that and make sure that doesn't happen. Uh, neurotransmitter dysfunction, anxiety, and or depression. If I had a nickel for everybody I have talked to that is depressed, or that has anxiety, I would be a very rich woman because that is something that is just um, pervasive in our world today. And so if that is something that you battle with a good deal, then it could be a vagus nerve issue. If you have blood sugar dysregulation, that means you either are hypoglycemic or you're a type 2 diabetic, you could have vagus nerve dysfunction. If you have metabolic dysfunction, and we talk about metabolic dysfunction all the time. If you listen to our uh, broadcast last week, we talked about anthocyanins. Anthocyanins help regulate metabolic processes. In a nutshell, if you are metabolically sound, everything is working the way it is supposed to. If you are not metabolically sound, then you have sickness and disease. That's easy. So you either have sickness and disease or you're sound. It just depends on where you are. Only you know. If you can get your metabolic uh, mechanisms in your body working in the correct way, then you're going to move from a disease situation into a healthy situation. Anthocyanins will do that for you. So if you don't know what anthocyanins are, then you can reach out and we can help you with that. Um, pain syndrome. If you have a lot of pain, then you probably have vagal nerve dysfunction. Thyroid imbalance, another thing. Detoxification pathway impairment, and we see this all the time. So when you have any of these things going on, it is because your vagus nerve, remember, the longest cranial nerve in your body from your brain to your large intestine and everything in between, everything works the way it is supposed to. It is a super highway that feeds information to the brain so the brain can do what the brain needs to do to get things working in the right way. So I know that's really, really uh, basic and very elementary. I don't want to be sounding like Charlie Brown's teacher, right? Because you need to understand so that you can do better. It is important to understand what causes the vagus nerve to become compromised in the first place. Anything that is stressful to the body physically, emotionally, or spiritually, and left unchecked can eventually damage the vagus nerve. So I don't know anybody who has an easy life. We're all dealing with something, maybe, you know, high anxiety because you're anticipating a great event like the holidays. It could be high anxiety because you're anticipating going to the dentist. Sorry about, sorry for all my dental friends. I know you're necessary and I'm glad you're here. In my world, that causes me a lot of anxiety. Thankfully, I, I don't have to do that very often. So it's not something that is left unchecked in my, you know, my body. So it's not something that's going to damage my vagal nerve. The first time I heard about a vagal nerve, and this is kind of a funny story. You may This may have happened to you. It may not have happened to you. But I was in my classroom. I used to be a teacher. I taught high school students. And somebody had opened up a bag of the hot Cheetos fiery Cheetos, I don't know what you call them. Anyway, they were the hot Cheetos. As I walked by, the child opened up the Cheetos, the aroma of that, you know, I got it because I was walking right by. My heart started pounding. I started hyperventilating. I mean, I thought I was going to have a heart attack and I couldn't understand why I was doing that. Well, somehow that hot, cheesy fire, whatever it was, it activated something in the vagal nerve system. Went to the doctor, talked to the nurse, all that kind of stuff. It was a vagal nerve stimulus. Has that ever happened before or since? No, it just happened that one time. But let me tell you, when it gets overly regulated, overly stimulated, you're going to know it because you're going to have that kind of thing. You know if you're having a panic attack, what happens? You're hyperventilating and your heart is just pounding. So that's the way that you know if you've got issues with that and we don't want that to be damaged. Now, your vagus nerve can be, as I just gave you an example, stimulated by food choices, inflammatory food choices, which is apparently what happened to me through no fault of my own. All right. It can be stimulated by infections. All right. 
Lyme disease, hormone imbalances, blood sugar dysregulation, poor sleep habits, exposure to environmental toxins, as well as heavy metals or chemicals. We, in our area, live really close to the ship channel. Thank God we do. It's the smell of money, right? However, the heavy metals, the petrochemicals, all of that gets into the system and it causes issues and it causes inflammatory processes. Anything the body deems life uh, giving physically, emotionally, or spiritually will strengthen the vagus nerve. So what strengthens it physically? Exercise, good food. What strengthens it emotionally? A lot of love, a lot of social interaction, a lot of um, pleasant situations where you're not on edge. And then, of course, spiritually, we all have a different spiritual journey. Wherever that is taking you, if it is a peaceful journey, if you're at peace with God, if you're at peace with mankind, then you're going to have good vagal tone, okay? Anything that the body deems life-threatening will do the opposite. Negative thoughts and brain patterns can contribute to vagal nerve dysfunction. So, there are two types of people. There are optimistic people that the glass is always half full. And then there are pessimistic people, the glass is always half empty. So, if you are a half-empty person, you're always looking at the negative side of things. You're always finding the... The downside, I call it the Eeyore personality, right? Oh, it's so bad. Nah, 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 nah. If, you're, if that's your thought pattern, you're going to damage your vagal nerve. So we don't want to do that. It seems that hard things in life, hardship of walking through chronic illness, further aggravates negative brain patterns and vagal dysfunction. So we want to do that. A high vagal tone has numerous benefits, including helping regulate blood glucose, reduce inflammation levels, improve digestion, boost your immune system, uh, support detoxification, improve metabolic function, calm stress, foster better mental health, and neurotransmitter function. So that's a whole lot of good things going on that you need to have good vagal tone. So. How do you do that? Well, I'm glad you asked. I'm going to give you just a lot of ways that you can do this. One thing is, is you can kind of declutter your life as far as stress and toxic people. Take the toxic people out of your life. If they don't celebrate you, if they don't foster a feeling of peace and calm, then they don't need to be in your life, okay? They just don't. So you want to do what you can do to get your internal environment at a peaceful level because you want to have... Uh, no stress so that you can work on your vagal nerve. So one of the best things that you can do is deep breathing. Most people breathe right here. They're, they're shallow breathers. They breathe just from the top of your chest. If you would go all the way down under your rib cage, your lungs hang down under your rib cage. I don't know if you know that or not, but your lungs are really, really big. And so if you are breathing from your belly, you push your belly out. When you inhale, you inhale and you push that belly out. That is diaphragmatic breathing. You're getting everything down on the inside. That's going to help you with your vagus tone. Uh, if you do what is called um, um, pranayama breathing, which is a yoga technique. I don't know if you do that. If you do box breathing, now I do box breathing, okay? Now I do not put my head in a box and breathe, okay? That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about box breathing. So you would do a count of four, inhale for four seconds, hold for four seconds, exhale for four seconds, hold for four seconds. That's called box breathing, okay? Why? Because you've got four sides of your box. So inhale for four seconds, hold for four seconds, Exhale for four seconds, hold for four seconds. You can do it six seconds. You can do it, you can do it all kinds of different ways, but you want to do the same. So it's four times four, six times four, eight times four, whatever you're able to do, then that's what you want to do. So that's called box breathing. When you do that, that shifts you from sympathetic dominance to parasympathetic dominance. Rest, recover, repair, all right, digest, all those kind of things. And so if you're not doing that, you're not going to have good uh, vagal tone. 
mindfulness. Now, we talked about spiritual. We talked about emotional. Uh, we want to do mindfulness. Mindfulness, prayer, meditation can positively impact the vagus nerve. Not only do these strategies combat stress and anxiety, but they can also increase heart rate variability. Now, you do want a wide range of heart rate variability. Remember what I said. We want to have a wave pattern, not a picket fence pattern. When you've got a wave pattern, there's a lot of variability between those R spikes. When you've got a picket pattern, there's not much variability between the R spikes. So, why do you have a heart attack? Because something happens, you know, an uh, anxiety, a trauma, who knows what happens, right? Your heart has a problem, it can't adjust to it, and so it spazzes and you have a heart attack. If you have good wide range of heart variability, you're going to be less likely to have a heart attack. So, stimulating the vagus nerve is going to help with that. So, we want to do that. Um, cold stimulation. Now, this is, I'm going to be honest with you, I am not going to do this, okay? I do not like being cold. I do not want to be cold. All right? That's not what I want to do. However, there are nationalities, I'll say nationalities, that they are well known for taking cold showers. They're well known for going and jumping in uh, an ice, you know, you cut out a, a hole in the ice and they, they jump in and, and they jump out because it's absolutely freezing because it's, it's in ice. They do that. Now, why do you do that? Because it shifts you from sympathetic into parasympathetic. Mentally, emotionally, I can't do that. Not going to do that. But if that's something that appeals to you, go for it. I went to a uh, place here in town. I wanted to look at their hyperbaric chamber because hyperbaric chambers are good for inflammation and different things. And I wasn't all that chuffed with their hyperbaric chamber. However, they showed me their cryogenic chamber. Well, mm -mm. they want you to get in this chamber naked at minus 25 degrees to minus 75 degrees. No, thank you. I don't like it when it's 30 degrees. Okay. And that is freezing, 32, freezing here in the United States. That's what it is. Not going to do that. However, if you do that and some people do that, then that's something that will shift you from sympathetic to parasympathetic. This is something everybody can do, and we all do this, okay? Singing, humming, chanting, and gargling, all right? So, if you're a singer, you sing all the time, you are toning your vagus nerve. If you hum a lot, you play the kazoo, right? You're stimulating your vagus nerve. If you gargle, now we're talking about harsh gargling, like you're, you put that water in your mouth and you uh, you know, you do it really, really loud, not just a little bitty of, a, oh, let me just kind of gargle just a little bit, but you do very robust gargling. That also stimulates your vagus nerve, right? So, exercise, yes, we all know that we should exercise, but exercise also stimulates the vagal nerve, all right? Uh, find an activity that is fun for you, that you enjoy, and stay consistent for optimal nerve stimulation. Chiropractic care can help you with that. Why is that? Remember, the the vagus nerve at the back of your brain, all of your nerves, they come this way and down. Your cranial nerve goes all the way down your spine. So when your spine is jacked up, subluxated is what they call it. I call it jacked up. When it's jacked up, you're pinching it. It's got no blood flow. It's got no oxygen. You've got nerve pinching, that kind of thing. When you go to a chiropractor and they straighten you out, it releases that nerve. It has energy. It has blood flow. It has oxygen. And it is fabulous. All right, so you want to do that. Also, massage, receiving a massage. You know when you come next to your husband or your wife and they just kind of put their arm around you and they just rub your back. How does that make you feel? That makes you feel fantastic. Why is that? Because that stimulates your vagal nerve. Right? So, you want to have a lot of hugs. I think the uh, whoever they are said that in order for humans to be healthy, they have to have at least 10 hugs a day. So, I'm not a great hugger if I don't know you. So, don't like come at me and want to hug me because that's probably not going to be good. 
if I know you, that might be a little bit different story, depending on who you are, just being, being honest out there. But for my kids, my grandkids, my husband, my parents, I mean, I can hug all day long. And so when you are getting that good hugging, that good massage, then that is stimulating your vagal nerve. When you support the gut, remember, the vagal nerve connects your brain to your gut, the gut-brain connection, the gut-brain axis, that's what we want. When that is connected, and there are different things that you can do to do that. We've got several different protocols here. We've got several different products here that will help you get on the way to support your gut and your brain. So if you're dealing with any kind of dysfunction at all, high blood pressure, high blood sugar, uh, any kind of metabolic dysfunction, what is a metabolic dysfunction, fatty liver disease, cancer, um, chronic migraines, all of those are metabolic challenges. So when you are having metabolic challenges, it is because your vagus nerve is not functioning the way it should. You may need omega-3 fatty acids. They are absolutely essential. Your brain thrives on omega uh, fish oils, all right? There's three, there's six, there's nine, right? You have to have them in the right ratio. There's something called essential fatty acids. You have to have them. They're called essential. If you don't have those in your diet, and most people do not, then your vagal nerve is going to be impaired because you don't have that uh, nutrient. Uh, the last thing I want to talk to you about, especially because we're coming up to the holidays, right? Laughter. When you laugh, and I'm not talking about the, you know, tee -hee. I'm talking about good rip-roaring belly laughs right, where you're crying, you're laughing so hard, you're crying, that stimulates the vagal tone and stimulates that. So while you are gearing up toward the holidays, don't think of all the anxiety, right? Think of all the opportunities that you're going to have to laugh, to be socially connected, to do all those kind of things that you need to do to stimulate your vagal nerve. Because if your vagal nerve is strong, not stressed, but strong, then you're going to be very healthy. You're going to be healthy at the metabolic level. So there's a lot of information that I gave you. If you need any products to help you with that, reach out to us and we definitely can uh, put you in the right direction. If you have not come in and done our little scanner, right? It takes 30 seconds. It costs $20. It's not a big deal, right? But it can tell you where you are in the nutrient department. Now we have here... We've got all these bracelets. Why do we have these bracelets? Because these bracelets tell you where you are in your nutrition. Me, I'm the good girl. I'm in the purple. The purple band is the highest band. And we've got products here that will absolutely, they're absolutely guaranteed to move you in that direction. So find out where you are. Get things that are guaranteed to move you in the right direction. Exercise, belly laugh, breathe deeply, do your box breathing, and sing. All those kind of things are cheap, they're easy, and they will tone your vagus nerve. So it is the weekend. I love you. Um, take care of yourself. Do a lot of restoration. Do all the things that I always tell you to do. Take care of yourself because you are the most important person to me. And I need to see you back next week. And I want you to have a great weekend. Bye-bye. Doesn't want to turn.